I'm Cameron Small, the developer of Marauders, and we're here at the Royal Armouries with Jonathan Ferguson. And we're here looking at the latest armory and weaponry added to the game. So we have another exclusive here um, for the game. Uh, we'll be looking into nail weaponry. Now initially we wanted to add it as a mechanic because we thought it would be dead silent. Um, now I'm not talking about, I found out afterwards that this actually ends up just being a bullet casing with ignition running and it fires the nail so it's just as loud as any other bullet. But this one is different. Well, well, there's a the, difficult with this thing because it's so um, it was effectively classified until until very recently. Mm. It's well, a lot of the details are still not accept, uh, not, not accessible. But we do know that there are two types, two broad types of ammunition. One of which is for firing underwater, which we'll talk about mm -hmm. in a minute. But the other type is allegedly. A form, it's a form of suppression, um, and you can look look up the patent. So this is a okay. secret. You can look up the Hecker and Koch patent for it is their product mm -hmm. for um, the out of water ammunition, and that is a bit like if, if anyone's ever seen the the Russian uh, piston captive piston system, where it contains the gas in the cartridge. So project it's essentially shooting out the projectile with full force, but then it's keeping all the gases in the round instead of dissipating them into a suppressor and then letting them leak out slowly. It's a bit like that. So the bullet, uh, the 7.62 millimeter bullet in a polymer sabo, which is what engages the rifling, and then when it hits the constricted muzzle, the sabo stops and keeps all the gas in, and the bullet carries on. Oh, okay. So in theory, it is in fact silenced or suppressed oh, okay. in the above ground form. Because you can shoot five rounds out of water and a normal pointed 7.62 millimeter bullets. So there's that, mm -hmm. and then there's the underwater Under version, version, which is okay. its primary purpose. I mean, that's enough reason for us to stick that as a lore, and that's why it's going to be quiet. So yeah. that's fine with me. That, for, it, for your universe, that could be the main reason it was invented. Great, I'll take it. <laughs> um, so this is a P11. Yep. Um, and it's a five round capacity from HK. Um, and you said this is in this from the 70s? Yeah, um, 1976 is when the design first emerged. Not, I don't know when production started. Um, I believe it ended in the 90s. So it, I, whoever's still using them, the, I gather that there are still special operations mm -hmm. forces using this thing. So they can get replacement rounds and battery packs and things, but you can't buy one as far right, as I know. Okay. So it's a sort of, it's quite a Cold War weapon in that respect. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously it wouldn't be if in field used to be some sort of like specific operation because reloading this, you know, isn't much of an option or no option at all. Because um, I can't imagine a bandolier full of these. <laughs> um, but we're, we're doing it in the game anyway because it's a cool <laughs> idea. Um, but yeah, so this is something that you'd send back and get re, you know, reloaded and for another operation it would be mid-operation reloading. Yeah, I mean, honestly, Nothing's been released of the actual use of this thing. Um, speculatively, it's got to be, you know, frogmen on frogmen, um, scuba divers taking pot shots at each other. And therefore, would you even have the, the, the load carrying capability to carry oh, a spare? Yeah. I mean, the designers have given you the option, so you could carry one spare. Yeah. M maybe your spare would be for firing out of water, but then. Yeah, I don't know. We know so little about the actual tactical mm -hmm. use of this thing. Yeah. We have to sort of say what we see. And what we see is a sealed, electrically fired, five round underwater gun firing, I, I think, super cavitating, uh, don't quote me, physicists, um, <laughs> uh, metal darts that are obviously a lot smaller than 7.62. Mm -hmm. Or if you reload, out of water, fairly ordinary 7.62 millimeter rifle bullets at quite low velocity. Mm -hmm. So to be clear there, we wouldn't call it the, the ammo nails, we call it metal darts is the proper designation. Uh, I mean, flechette is another term for okay. these things. Um, I'd, prob I'd probably go with flechette. Okay, we just make it clear that it's yeah, not the, sh the, then, the then slug or... Definitely not for banging into planks of wood. <laughs> so yeah, I yeah. Call them. <laughs> yeah, nails, yeah. Especially with crafting our game is very and unless you want Unless you want to tribute, of course, quite game. Oh yeah, the nail gun. Yes, of course. <laughs> Um, so the other two guns within this series, so we'll introduce the metal dart ammo, for instance, and two other weapons that we come across with it, one being the SPP-1 um, and the APS underwater rifle. 
um, which I believe are both Russian design. Yep. Um, again, Cold War era, I imagine. Oh yeah, definitely in that. Everyone's like, planning some scuba war that I Clearly. assume didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe it did, we didn't know about it. Or maybe someone saw Thunderball one too many times. <laughs> yes, I was going to say. I mean, outside that is just, this is very James Bond, but um, yeah, so this capacity is five, the SPP one is a four, I believe, and the APS on a Royal Four is in the 20 above, I believe. Um, so this would be like a mid-range of that series, like very deadly. But one major change we're going to do, and again, I'm going to have to upset you, is to either turn it into a stamp steel design or bake light the whole thing, um, or maybe a little tidy wooden grip around here uh, with electrics running through it. <laughs> health and safety of that. But we don't have health and safety in space, so you can do what you want. Um, <laughs> but if you were to remove this kind of plastic aesthetic, I'd say, what would your guidance be? I mean, if you take the plastic away from the P11, you haven't got a lot left. No, just the metal darts, <laughs> I imagine. Well, the, the, so the outer water version still has like steel barrel liners with rifling in. Mm -hmm. um, I've actually never seen inside the dart version. We, we'll have to, we have a spare unit we'll have to take apart at some point. Uh, we, have a, we might have a live one somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, it's, there isn't a great deal more to it. Obviously, there are metal components. You, you could replace, like may, maybe with a more primitive polymer um, would, would be my recommendation. You could maybe even make it a brown, visibly kind of Bakelite-y yeah, polymer. I love it, yeah, polymer. perfect. You said I, I mean, if you could make it, you could make it out of fabricated metal. The problem is, if, if it's if it's still designed to fire underwater, that's that's the thing that will inform you because you couldn't really seal it against the water if you made it out of stamped steel. Not not easily. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, if you want to preserve what this is, but put it on a parallel universe tack, the way to do it would be with a primitive plastic and probably some asbestos to seal okay, the water yeah, yeah. out. Nice. They're fully <laughs> suited up, so it's not a huge issue with asbestos, but uh, thank you for the permission. We will do that. Well, thank you did you. say no health and safety. Yeah, and there is no health and safety in space. Yeah, great. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. <laughs>